didn't work out. Okay? Don't be afraid to ask questions. I will be watching you more. So this is the time to ask. Okay. So let's talk about communication. How to communicate? Why we communicate? So why do we communicate? Answer that. Why does a goalkeeper communicate? What? I thought I'd say more than that, but yeah, that's a good point. Right? Communication. Can't see. 
What's the difference between here and here? More urgent. More urgent. Louder does not. I'm sure, a lot of you are loud. Okay. But there's a difference in the tone of your voice or the inflection of your voice or the urgency in your voice. It has to be there. If you talk the scene the whole game, your defenders are going to get bored. They're going to stop listening to you. You're going to sound like monotone, like a buzz. Okay? They're going to hate you. Okay? When the ball's on this side of the field, what should we be focused on? Positioning your what? Your back four, your midfielders? Talk louder. Speak up if you're going to say everything. Can you, can you communicate with everybody if the ball's on this side of the field? No. Effectively? No. no. Do we need to tell the forwards what to do? No. 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 I mean, very briefly, maybe if he passes it to his right back, maybe we tell our forward, keep them one way. That would be the, the most you need to say to your forwards. You don't need to yell at your forwards to shoot the ball. Okay, you're wasting your breath. You don't need to tell the forwards when to pass the ball. You don't even need to tell the midfielders when to pass the ball. You can tell them who's open. But don't yell shoot, don't yell pass. That's their job. Your job is to make sure when the ball's on this side of the field that your back four is organized or your back three for you younger guys. Okay? You need to make sure they are ready for whatever. When we turn the ball over or get a shot on goal, those back four need to be ready. Most of the time they're going to be facing two guys. So these two circles will be against our back four. If our, one of our backs goes into the attack, now it's three on two. Now it becomes even more important that we talk to those backs. Okay, so what types of things, if the ball is on this side of the field still, are we saying to our back four? Give me some examples. I want to hear from some of you younger guys too. Push up where? What put, first of all, first of all, let's go over something else. How do we, what's, how should we communicate? Other than the inflection of our voice, what are some characteristics of our communication? Positive. Positive, that's a good one. Is it always positive? No. Should it always be positive? No. No, probably 98% of the time, it should be positive. There is a time where you can be negative. And we'll go over that. There is a time where you can be negative and demand something out of your players. So give me some other characteristics. Descriptive, I don't know if I agree with that. Brief, okay? Short. If I say a whole sentence to somebody, <laughs> they lost me at the second word. They're trying to defend the ball and you're reading a poem to them. <laughs> okay? They're not gonna they're not gonna respond. Yeah, I'm serious. If you read a poem to them, they're not gonna listen to you. No, I'm not saying this, but honestly, it should be short. What else should it be? This is part of communicating, talking so people can hear you. Effective. What, is, what do you mean by effective words? What's an effective word? Something that like gets to the point. Okay, exactly. To the point. So, if I say step up, what does that, what does that tell your back for? I'm taking on you. For good reason. Push up to get out of the box. Yeah, but where do they push up to? Out of the box. Out of the box, what does that mean? That could be anywhere. That could be here, here, here. You're not telling them anything. You're telling them to push up. Amount. That is a general comment. We should that's a waste of your breath. Yes, amount. So push the half. Normally there's a half circle here. Maybe we tell them to push to the circle. Step up to half. And as you guys get older, the older guys, you can probably say, step up 10 yards. Things like general comments like that. But give them, give them a spot where you want them to be. Do not say step up. That does not tell them anything. Step up to half, step up to the circle. Step up to, the, normally there's a D right here. We call this the D. Okay, step up to the top of the D. Something, but not just step up. 
Okay. Okay. So cons another word is concise. Be very descriptive but short. I don't like the word descriptive because you could go on and on about something being descriptive. So concise, to the point, short, and demanding. Okay? If you're just so ho-hum about everything, what happens when you're in class and your teacher's just monotone? Oh, you fall asleep. You fall asleep, you're bored, you're starting to get your cell phone out during class. Something, something that you shouldn't be doing because you're bored. So if you demand, all right, they're going to listen, okay? But we demand more when the ball is down here, okay? When the ball is inside the 18 or in our defensive third, we have to be demanding. Very demanding. Louder, louder than if the ball's here, but you have to have urgency in your voice. So if someone's about to shoot, we have to say, block the shot, dive, something so they know they're going to be confident in you if they do get the shot off of. They know you're paying attention, but if you believe in your defenders, I guarantee you they will do anything for you. Okay, a lot of you guys have problems with your back four. I mean, I hear about them all the time. They don't, they don't listen to me. They don't, they don't, they do the opposite of what I say. Stuff like that. But that's because you're not demanding. You're just talking. Okay, I've watched you guys play. I've coached a few people in this room for multiple years. Okay, and I see the same thing. It's just, you're just talking. Okay, demand. Make them respect you. If they don't do what you say, that's probably a time where you can be negative. Or, like I was talking about with Davis and Jacob, you got to know your back four. If you know four people on your team or three people on your team, know your defenders. Know that I can yell at Davis during the game and he's going to change, change the way he plays. And know that I gotta wait till halftime or at a corner kick or sometime when I have time alone where I can say something to Jacob. Say, man, you didn't listen to me that time. What's going on? Alright, let's figure out the problem. Okay, I can say to Davis right then on the field, you need to listen to me, blah, 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 blah get in his face, do whatever you need to do, and he's gonna react the right way. Okay? That is one time where you can have a negative tone. We don't want to call them an idiot or stupid or some of the things we think about saying. Okay, that's not going to help the situation. That's not what I mean by negative. But there is a time where you can get in a player's face and tell them that they're not doing their job right. Okay? 